New Moons! Ten new moons have been discovered orbiting the red gas giant of Jupiter, bringing its already gargantuan total up to 79 moons. This find has also provided some additional info for the two Jovian moons discovered last year, which were covered in this lunatic video here and nicknamed Edward and Jacob. So I'm going to include them in this video also and bring the total number of new moons up to 12. Discovered by, you guessed it, Scott S. Shepard, Notorious Moon Spotter, and were found while he and his team were searching for the elusive Planet 9. Now I personally thought it would be the Juno missions to first reveal the many unknown moons orbiting Jupiter, but it was actually a ground-based telescope in Chile that snapped the photos of these new Jovian additions. While these discoveries have been announced recently, the moons were actually spotted over the last year or so. This is following the protocol to check if the objects detected were actually moons and not just random space debris passing by the planet. Thanks to these four telescopes, the 12 new orbiters have been confirmed as moons of Jupiter, almost all of which fall neatly into existing orbital groups. Out of the newly found dirty dozen, two of them are surprisingly close to Jupiter. These fall neatly into the Himalaya group, a collection of prograde irregular satellites that orbit Jupiter at about 11 billion kilometers. As a terminology reminder, when a moon's orbit is prograde, it is traveling in the same direction as the parent planet's axial rotation. Retrograde is the opposite of this and orbits against the planet's spin. Most of Jupiter's moons have a retrograde orbit, and now it has nine more to add to the collection, so why are there so many retrograde moons? Well, the answer could lie in one of the newly discovered moons, S2016J2, which has been labelled by its finders as the Oddball. Given the working title of Valetudo, the Roman god of health and hygiene who was also the great-granddaughter of Jupiter, this moon is indeed an odd ball. Like the other retrograde moons, Valetudo is over 20 million kilometers from Jupiter, but its orbit is distinctly prograde, and the only one to orbit in that direction at that distance. Since Valetudo's orbit crosses the paths of almost all of these outer retrograde moons, and does so in the opposite direction, it's inevitable that it will have undergone some dramatic collisions in its history. In fact, Scott S. Shepard has proposed that it's because of this oddball prograde moon that the outer orbits of Jupiter have grouped together the way we see them today. He suggests Valetudo used to be a lot bigger in its past, dozens of kilometers across as opposed to the couple of k it is today. As Valetudo hurtled around Jupiter in the opposite direction to everyone else, it smacked into any moon that got in its way, semi-obliterating them like a celestial wrecking ball. Each collision resulted in the moons being split apart, creating smaller moons and a ton of dust that followed a similar orbital path. Each of these orbital groups are named after the largest member. For example, the Kame group is named after, you guessed it, Kame. It's quite likely that the largest members of these groups are the original moons that Valetudo destroyed, and the other smaller members are simply the remnants of these collisions. Out of the 12 new moons, only one has been named, and even then, it's only a suggestion, and it has to be approved by the IAU, leaving 11 moons that are currently unnamed. What could these names be, and how can we name them? Find out in the next video.